Okay. Uh, my name is Dr. Anwar Qureshi. I am a acute care physician at Northern Lincolnshire and Gould NHS Foundation Trust. I've been in UK since 2001. I landed in UK actually uh, on the 30th of September in that year, just fresh after 9-11. Um, it was coincidental, nothing to do with that. But um, I joined uh, at that time um, a number of doctors who were in East of London trying to work up their career. It used to be very difficult at that time because there were lots of doctors coming from overseas and there were very few jobs and there were a lot of local graduates also competing for the jobs. So the, the way we used to get into um, any training or any jobs at that time was to gain clinical attachment. So the first task always would have been getting clinical attachment to a into a hospital. The first clinical attachment I got was in three months time at King George's Hospital Ilford. From that onwards they had a PRHO job which was a pre-registration house officer job which is equal to a now nowadays Foundation 1 post uh, which is what uh, was available in the hospital. So through the attachment then they had that vacancy which I got into and that's where my career began in the National Health Service. And this was February 2002 when I got the six months of PRHO job. A lot of people advised to say no, go for SHO jobs and not go for PRHO. But the conclusive uh, argument was that actually it's best to start your career in a new system from baseline. If you do that and go through all the years of training, then when you reach a consultant job, in fact, you've done all of it. So nobody can challenge. You know how juniors are. You can look after them better. Uh, you can care for them and supervise them better as well because you've been through all those steps in career. So that was very helpful actually, that job. And that got me into uh, good books with my consultants at that time as well. But um, one thing that we had to do at that time was work very hard. You had to do 150% more than the local graduate at that time to be able to progress in career. So that job then, six months down the line, got me a uh, trust um, SHO job, which were new jobs introduced at that time in September 2002 uh, at the same hospital. Subsequently, that got me another job in a tertiary centre, which was London Chest Hospital, for six months uh, SHO in cardiology. Luckily, I got that job because all the other trainees alongside me had already done PACES and this was my first SHO job but it was only on the basis of the references I had because of the hard work I'd done during the PRHO job and the trust SHO job. So you know hard work doesn't get unpaid, eventually you get something at the end of it. And that job then helped, helped me get a two year SHO rotation uh, around Watford, Harefield, Mount Vernon Hospital in medicine. During those two years up to uh, 2004, um, I completed my membership exam and did PACES. Following that, there was a task to then apply for a specialty. Before applying for a specialty, it was always thought um, better to have, it, have some experience in other specialties. So what I chose was A&E, in fact. So I did six months in A&E at a very uh, nice uh, coastal hospital in Poole. This was a teaching hospital and the training there was remarkable. I have yet to see another accident emergency department which has that um, level of training. They had so many trainee registrars and the consultant was also very keyed up to train. Uh, so it was a very good experience for those six months, you know, that brushed off all my experience as SHO in medicine and gave me the skills to actually work as a registrar afterwards. So then I joined East Surrey Hospital Redhill uh, as a locum appointment for service because I, I was at that time applying for the training numbers. At that time it used to be SPR, so Specialist Registrar Training Numbers. Currently uh, the uh, equivalent is the STRs or Specialist Training Register Numbers. So um, I was actually in the last batch of the SPR training which finished in 2007. And um, at that time I chose geriatrics and the reason behind that was I had done a lot of cardiology during SHO jobs and seen tertiary centers and seen the um, cardiologists or people who do skilled work and procedures 
and realize that actually, you know, um, uh, there's a lot of uh, dearth of people who actually sit and talk to patients and listen to patients. Uh, all procedural skill related specialties uh, eventually turn up to do all procedures and have less time to spend with the patients. The only specialties at that time you could see that would actually interact more with patients or use your brains to do diagnostic work would be geriatrics. So that was the reason to choose geriatrics as a specialist training. Um, so I trained in geriatrics, simultaneously had uh, um, CCT in general internal medicine. And I finished training in 2011, when I started 2007, finished in 2011 and subsequently straight away uh, applied for this job that I'm currently working in at Scunthorp General Hospital in 2011, joined as acute care physician. So the question everybody asks me is why acute medicine? And uh, acute medicine was developing as a specialty just while I was training in geriatrics and general internal medicine as a separate uh, training uh, specialty. But subsequently, anybody who's trained in GIM or equivalent specialities could work in acute medicine. Throughout the uh, period of training, uh, the bit that I enjoyed the most was the front door. Uh, managing acute emergencies may it be uh, younger patients or elderly patients. Hence, I thought the best way to keep on doing that would be to work in a place where you would practice acute medicine. That's why I chose front door. Similarly, <clears throat> I did one and a half years of stroke during my uh, specialist uh, training and I've utilized that by doing stroke here as well. So the, when I joined here, in fact, the stroke services here were uh, really on their uh, minimal basic uh, services. And I spent two years developing the stroke services at Scunthorpe as a stroke lead for the hospital. So just to briefly tell you, when you train in geriatrics, there are a few bits or portions of the geriatric training. Inpatient care, front door geriatrics, there's community geriatrics. So you could choose which bit you want to do. Now, if I worked in south of uh, UK, then I wouldn't have been able to do general medicine on calls because the on call setup in the south of UK is such that you do geriatric on calls separately and general medicine on calls separately whereas in the north particularly Yorkshire Midlands you do unselected medical take hence the benefit of working around this area is that I could keep both skills so if I do general medicine on call I do unselected take so I see elderly as well as younger patients that's one benefit. Second is I want to do stroke and I wanted to do front door stroke. So I do hyperacute stroke, which is involves acute assessment of stroke patients and stroke thrombolysis. And uh, when I joined, as I previously said, um, the stroke services here were at their basics. Then it was all down to us to actually develop them. So I became the clinical lead for stroke services. Two years down the line, by 2014, we became a 24-7 stroke service here. We then centralized in Scunthorpe from Grimsby as well. And we got peer accreditation at that time as well for this stroke service here. Um, so much so that we got this service into momentum. And then I handed it over to um, our current stroke lead at that time. Um, and now we are about 17th in the country for stroke services uh, as the south of Humber. So that's that bit. Uh, subsequently, I've had the chance here to develop uh, acute medicine, uh, which is visible in the form of ambulatory care, our CDU, the working rota we have. We've grown in numbers. We were only two consultants at that time, and now it's five of us with a full rota that runs acute services throughout seven days. So the bit that, that I enjoyed during my training was the front door. Hence, I've concentrated more on that and developed that in the current hospital. So um, it, it wasn't very difficult for me to uh, actually adjust to working environment in the UK because I'd been coming to UK since I was a child almost every year um, due to family reasons. So I knew the environment here and I was used to going into big hospitals with my brother because he was under treatment. But uh, when it came to actually working here, I realized that actually environment is much more conducive in terms of 
it's friendly you work you get rewarded you work hard you succeed and the practice is very ethical um, and uh, things that are sometimes very difficult to practice back home the working pattern back home where i come from for example pakistan or all the doctors that we work with here who belong to the subcontinent or other countries from africa or um, arabic uh, arabian uh, peninsula um it is actually all they find is that the work practice here is very ethical and uh, uh, it is easy conducive environment to work in and people are very friendly the other thing if you compare it with uh, america or canada is that um actually the health system here is much better serving for the patients as well as the doctors now you can compare the pays or whatever you want to with america but the working hours as you know we would discuss with anybody the working hours that they have to put in and the type of hours they have to put in are completely anti social whereas here in uk you can enjoy a very good social life if you choose you can have a very good work life balance and that's the uh, essence of work in the nhs in uk is that the work life balance can be determined by you um there is basic requirements of a job but there is no nobody pushing you to do anything more than that unless you actually want to do it and you can go less than full time as well which is an option available to all doctors and as well as consultants in regular jobs so that way the working environment is much more helpful here okay um the best thing about working in uk is that the practice is ethical um you are by the book and you work you are accountable you work hard you are accredited for it um you can train people the way you want to you can work the way you want to you can work hours that you want to at times there is a baseline requirement of all jobs but then you can adjust to whatever more or less you want to work in the best thing i have found is that i can give a lot of time to my family um after 5 o'clock on the days that i'm not on call and then yet there are days that i'm fixed to be on call or the weekends that i'm fixed to be on but there is nothing beyond that that i need to do so it's not an unexpected way of life it is a very expected way of life that we can lead while working in the nhs the other thing is that uh, people are very honest and uh the fa- there is face value to what they say and people that you work with um you would come to know them and people are very helpful other than work uh, there is a lot to like about uk which and the most important bit is the scenic beauty in this country you know you can travel around uh, easily anywhere you travel throughout even any corner of the uk it will seem the same as the part of the uk that you live in services um shopping uh hotels wherever you go it's all available in the same manner as it is in the rest of the country so you'd feel at home throughout the country also it's very easy to travel around europe uh, in fact sometimes it's cheaper to travel around europe than within the country in uk so that's another opportunity that is available for doctors who work here is that you can travel around the whole of europe uh spending less money than you would while uh, traveling around uk so that's another opportunity available for the time that you're working in the uk so the structure of training in uk is very simple and straightforward as it would be visible on all websites as well that the first thing after graduation what you do is foundation program which is foundation 1 and foundation 2 years subsequently you apply for whichever specialty you want to go into if you want to go into medicine it is cmt and currently it's been changed into uh, im training so previously used to be 2 years now it will be 2 or 3 years depending upon which specialties subsequently you want to do after that is specialist training which is st onwards and that is st3 onwards now it would be st4 onwards or st3 depending upon the specialty finishing in st7 subse- following which you would get completion of <coughs> certificate of completion of training um now the important bit here is people 
at which stage they come to UK, where do they get to? So most people will get at trust grade CMT or CT level. It is not essential to go into CMT training jobs to be able to get CMT competencies. You can do non-training CMT jobs for a year, two years, um, and gain CMT training, CMT training competencies in that. You can register to CMT portfolio with, uh, during that period. Uh, it costs about 160, 170 pounds. And if you fulfill that and you've got competencies and you get through your exams, in fact, with your MRCP and PACES, you can actually apply for ST3. So you don't need to again apply for CMT training to go into ST3 jobs. Similarly for foundation uh, level, nobody really gets into foundation one jobs from outside the country because those jobs usually go to the graduates locally. There are very few locum F1 jobs. So mostly people will come into foundation two level jobs. And if you can get foundation two competencies done during that period, then subsequently people can apply for GPVTS training or CMT or basic surgical training following that. So that opportunity is there for you. Uh, and it all depends on which stage you want to come to the UK and what you want to do subsequently. Okay, um, one thing that I would um, advise all our junior colleagues that are coming over to UK to work is that the only thing that pays off is hard work. If anybody has this in mind that I'd come and not work hard and still would succeed, then UK is not the place for them to work in. And that's the sole thing that will help you overcome all challenges that you face. Because hard work itself is your reference. You know, your consultants that you work with, the seniors that you work with, will give you references for the next job or the rotation or whatever you apply for. And that is what eventually determines where you get to in future. But that's all based on hard work. So the advice that I would give to anybody that is coming over is that please accustom yourself to hard work and communication. The better you are at communicating, the better you would be as a trainee, as a doctor, uh, as a person looking after a patient and serving the system. Okay, um, the advice to any doctors that are uh, really looking at coming to UK is that there are various ways to come to UK to work and all lead through registration with the General Medical Council. Uh, there are two ways to register. One is the Professional Lingu Linguistic Assessment Board exam, which is PLAB. And the other is to get exemption from the PLAB exam. And there are some equivalence uh, examinations and fellowships all over the world that lead to exemption from it. And then that leads to what we call the MTI program, which is Medical Training Initiative. So either you go through that or you can get exemption and come and work. But if you go through Medical Training Initiative, that is a RCP-sponsored uh, training initiative, that is only for a limited period of time on a limited visa, then you have to go back after that uh, if you wanted to get a regular job and then reapply for another visa. So when you try to apply, you have to look at specifically how you're wanting to come and work in the UK um, because that determines how long you would stay. And if you want to permanently come and stay, then you probably better off doing PLAB or having a full exemption and coming in on a visa that will lead to indefinite leave. So that's one thing about the type of entry. The second thing is uh, recruitment wise, there are lots of jobs available at the moment. Uh, there was a hitch last year when there were limited visas, but with our efforts we've gone through that because initially they were limited to about 2700 visas, but now doctors are exempted from that limited number hence that obstacle we've gone through okay and crossed over so that uh, is no longer a problem uh, but you need to know which part of the country you want to work in and then apply there there's no point giving out blanket uh, applications to 100 different trusts and then going to 100 interviews and then not choosing any of them that wastes your time that wastes uh, the employer's time um, we do recruitment in two categories here. One is obviously middle, middle grades, which we do by MTI. Um, sometimes we do it directly. And the other one is CT 
uh, trust grade CT doctors which we employ directly. Our jobs from our trust are available on NHS jobs website and we do a rolling interview uh, system so that as soon as we've applied we've got enough candidates we don't wait for the um, last date we actually try to interview as many candidates we've got depending upon the jobs that we've got available so those are ways to come in to UK okay and I think that's true for the rest of the trusts around the country as well so please look at which area you want to work in and then apply accordingly and the how you want to get the GMC registration that's the most important bit thank you